You read the video title right. The Germans and Americans fighting side by side against the Nazis in one of the strangest battles of the Second World War. Let me set the stage here. It's May 4th, 1945, a mere four days after Hitler bestowed upon himself the title of the man who killed Hitler, and the Reich that was supposed to last a thousand years wouldn't last until the end of next week. The Soviets had taken Berlin, and the hammer and sickle were waving above the Reichstag. Even though the war was most certainly lost, not all of the Third Reich was under Allied control. One of these regions was the Austrian Alps. And amid the mighty snow-covered peaks of this mountain range stood the small castle Ita. What makes this castle so special wasn't its tactical location, historical value, or easy access to ski slopes. No, what made it special were its inhabitants. Castle Itte was the location where Germany held their French VIPs, aka very important prisoners. Among them you had heavy hitters like former French Prime Ministers Daladier and Reynaud, former Commanders-in-Chief Végan and Gamelin, and even Charles de Gaulle's older sister. Near the castle was the town of Virgel. Officially, Virgil had been abandoned by the German army, but instead of the Allies taking the town, roaming bands of SS soldiers did. What you need to realize is that the people still fighting on the German side in early May 1945 weren't your regular run-of-the-mill German soldiers. Those men were by that point surrendering and defecting en masse. No, the soldiers still fighting were mostly fanatical SS ideologues, determined to go down with the ship and take as many people as possible with them. And that's exactly what was happening in Virgil. Anyone flying white or Austrian flags was shot on sight, along with any man above the age of 16 on the grounds of them being quote-unquote cowards. But the town wasn't entirely left to its own devices. A small part of the German army unit, led by Major Josef Gangel, had defied the order to retreat and instead stayed in Virgil to protect its citizens from the SS onslaught. And this is where our story starts. Castle Ita was guarded by soldiers from the SS Totenkopfverbände. And quick side note here, how can you wear a hat like this? You know, with skull and all, and not realize you're the bad guy. Anyway, on May 4th, the SS guards suddenly abandoned the castle and the prisoners took their chances. They sent out the castle cook to look for help. This cook contacted the Austrian resistance in the town of Virgil and was taken to Major Gangel, who devised a plan to approach the Americans with a white flag and ask them for help in defending the castle and the town. There was also help from another, rather unlikely member of the Austrian resistance, SS Captain Kurt Siegfried Schrader, the most stereotypical evil-looking-ass Nazi you can imagine. Due to Schrader being captain, he had the authority to stop the SS troops in the villages surrounding the castle from attacking it and murdering everyone. But that authority would probably only buy them a little time. Only the US Army could prevent everyone in the castle from being massacred. In the meantime, Gangel had gotten into his car and driven a couple of miles north to the village of Kufstein, where he encountered some American tanks. Gangel was taken to Lieutenant Lee, whom, after hearing what Gangel had to say, was like, fuck it, let's go, and a task force of seven tanks was sent to defend Virgil and the castle. Only four of which actually made it to Virgil, because apparently shoddily built wooden bridges don't really like it when you drive several tons of freedom over them. Two of the four remaining tanks stayed in Virgil to protect the city from a possible SS assault, and the other two joined Gangel, Lee, Schrader, and around a dozen German and American troops in the defense of the castle, which quickly turned into one tank when they encountered yet another bridge. What happened next is living proof that sometimes reality is stranger than fiction, because honestly, you just can't make this shit up. An American lieutenant, an SS captain, and a Wehrmacht major are fighting against Nazis to protect French prisoners in a 13th century Austrian castle. This is really just some endgame type crossover bullshit. Anyway, our ragtag team of unlikely buddies reinforced the castle, placed the tank in the entrance, and ordered the prisoners to hide in the basement. Somewhat unsurprisingly, the prisoners refused and insisted to fight alongside the men, because why the fuck not? In the meantime, several trucks of SS soldiers were spotted around the castle, and some of them were carrying anti-tank weapons. At 4 a.m., May 5th, the SS attack began. What you need to know is that the defenders were severely outnumbered and outgunned. Apart from the tank, they only had rifles and submachine guns, and American reinforcements were still miles away. This is where Castle Itter, being a castle, comes in handy, since castles are quite literally designed to withstand attacks from materially and numerically superior enemies. The American tank takes a lot of German machine gun fire, and troops with grappling hooks tried climbing the walls but to no avail. While the Americans
Germans defended the castle gate, the Germans and French prisoners fired down from the upper floors. However, at 8.30 the situation began to look dire, with multiple new trucks of SS soldiers arriving at the scene, together with a 20mm anti-aircraft cannon and an 88mm gun, who in turn began to take pot shots at the castle, with the 88mm gun blasting holes into the walls as if they were made out of butter. And just when you thought it couldn't get worse, it got worse. The tank got hit, caught on fire, and fucking exploded. Somehow the crew survived, but without the tank, the gatehouse would soon be taken. And that's when the French prisoners joined the Americans to hold the gate, with 60-year-old former Prime Minister Paul Reynaud unloading magazine after magazine at their enemy as if he was blessed by Korn himself. Now, Reynaud was a politician and probably didn't understand the concept of returning fire, so he just kept standing in the window and shooting his gun as the SS turned their MZ-42 at him. Gangel saw this was a disaster waiting to happen and tackled Reynaud. However, Gangel caught the full barrage of bullets. And Gangel, the man who had fought for Germany the entire war, now dead because he saved a Frenchman from other Germans. With Gangel dead and their ammunition dangerously low, the castle was about to be overrun. Lee tried to send a desperate call for help to the Austrian resistance, but the line was cut halfway through the conversation. Is this the Austrian resistance? We are low on ammo and about to be overrun. We need help. No, this is Patrick. And just when all seemed lost, freedom arrived. Multiple American tanks showed up over the horizon and the battle immediately turned. The SS soldiers dispersed and fled into the woods and the castle was saved. Out of all of the defenders, Gangel was the only casualty, though other people were wounded. For his sacrifice, Gangel was hailed as a hero of Austria and when you visit Virgil today, you can see that they named the street after him. Not a particularly interesting street, mind you, but still, nice for them to do that. So, what did we learn? Real life is sometimes stranger than fiction. That's all for now, and I'll see you whenever I decide to upload a new video.